Hello and welcome to Shooting Outdoors. This is the Sig Virtus. I'm going to go over this today. It's been in the workshop twice already, but I'm going to go over the ugly points, some of the nice points, and the hop up kit that I plan to do for it and sell via the website. So, this has been into the workshop twice, this Sig Virtus. For one, it was leaking air out the magazine area, which is just there. I know the gun box kind of blends in nicely, camouflages it. And the second time was it was constantly jamming. You couldn't fire it. It was locking up. It wouldn't do uh, semi-automatic shots. So we've been fixing that as well. Right then, where to start with this? So where this rifle's strong points are, they are not accuracy. They're, they're there or thereabouts. You can hit dinner plates, for example, with them quite easily. But to get down to really tight groups, you're going to have to do a lot of work, especially in terms of harmonics, I think, with the barrel. Where this rifle is strong, though, is sort of popping, shooting, you know, bam, 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 that kind of thing with target wise. You get the idea, right? It's that kind of what you see Keanu Reeves and Lewis Hamilton and other sort of celebrities doing on that shooting range out in the US. You know, hiding behind a wall, sneaking out, popping two shots. A scope really is wasted on this thing, but this is what this owner wanted. Personally, when I shot it, I took that off and just looked down the uh, the rail there, which was uh, about as accurate as you need really for something like this. So let's just go over the nuts and bolts of this thing. Uh, Sig Sauer made apparently. Right, okay. So we'll start at the back. This is a plastic butt plate. All the plastics that are on this, they're not Magpul, right? They're they're just cheap injection molded. They're, they're not like the Viroc, it's you know, composite sort of stuff. They're just it's just garbage, right? There's no other way to say it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, roll a turd in glitter. It is just garbage. This crack along the back here, you can see where I've tried to super glue it together. This is actually now just a practice thing to try and find a way to actually work with this material if this ever happens again, because you can't get spares for it. So over the winter, this was stored in the gun rack. It's a very front heavy rifle, this, Re refocus. So when you're on that, it's constantly trying to dive down towards the thing. That's why most people carry them upright, like they're some kind of Congan rebel. <laughs> That's what the only way I can describe it. But it was sat as these are here on this, this gun rack. I put them on there, it just helps with the balance, keeps everything back. The rifles like these ones, for example, will sit in the bottom of this rack, but the review isn't about this rack, or this video isn't about my rack. But it was sat, like I said, as there, mainly because of the weight. So if I sat it in the bottom in this channel here, this cut out, it would just lean forward and, and fall over. Over the winter, while I was away in a different country with my family, it just came back and it was just cracked. Simple as that, it was just literally cracked. I mean, should you be expecting that? just for it to be sat on or stored exactly like any other rifle would be and then that cracks and right so what do you do if it does crack well you to be honest with you you're buggered you haven't got a, a cat and else chance i had to really beg beg to get this uh one of these but to get that i had to buy this whole bottle so this whole assembly back was what i had to buy now the job to fix a leak on this gun came to about 35 pounds it was more about understanding than anything else uh, there was some work done internally with uh, some shimming going on in the valving system, but effectively, yeah, it wasn't a particularly big job. This cost a hell of a lot more than what I, you know, did the job up. So when I say cost, I mean labour. So for, you know, sitting there working it all out, I don't really charge. Once I know where I'm going with it, that's when the stopwatch starts and that's when the labour starts. The parts, etc., are sort of separate to that. So the whole thing, I think I charged about £45 to do the whole lot, to reseal it, pour the shims, the hop-up kit in there that I do for it, and then I had to pay nearly £100 for a bottle just because that cracked while it was being stored as you would store a gun in a gun rack. I mean, to me, that's... I want that money back, to be honest with you, Sig, if you're watching. I want that, I want that back. Um... Next problem I have with this rifle is this thing here, the, the fill gauge. Let me try and get a zoom in on that. So you can see there, one, two, three, four, five. What does that mean? Well, we can see the times 1,000. We see it's PSI. So these are 1,000 PSI increments. 
Now this is only to be filled up to 1200 PSI, I believe. I don't know if you can see that there. So you've got to try and find 1200 PSI on that. So basically fill it up between one and one and a half, somewhere around there, because that needle is so big, it's nowhere near accurate. Once it drops down to about where it is now, the 500 PSI mark, that's when you lose your single shot capability. That was about three magazines, which is about 90 shots. And then that was it, we're down to single shot. You know, having to cock this, fire it, cock that, fire it. Right, so that sorts out my gripes with it. I like that idea though. I like the fact that it has got a proper fill adapter that you just clip on. There's no additional bits to clip into my bottle, this, that, and the other. I can just get any bottle, on it goes, job to good. Now, let's get on to the next bit, the leaking. So when it first came in, it was leaking from here. Just literally, every time you try to fill it up, air would wash out the bottom. Think of it like a CO2 system, because that's what the valve in inside it is like. It's just a CO2 system out the MCX, MPX, whatever, you know. This area here needs to be filled. So this bottle, sorry, this bottle needs to be filled up. You screw it all in like a CO2 canister. Then it's fully charged and it'll just blow and lock out the system, which is what that system needs in order for it to seal. It needs to be constantly charged. If you go in there empty, and try and fill up this bottle it will just leak straight through the valving system that valving system needs pressure behind it to actually work and seal should i say now clean up a bit of dust in there it tells you how long it's been sat around while i work out how to fix it the next thing was then there was little minute leaks in various parts of the chassis so what i did was then shim this entire valving line to the main valve itself now when this came in, it was, you look there, around this joint here, that was wobbling like a cocky, so pretty much like a normal AR-15, it just wobbles away. Um, it's very hard to try and get it solid. As you can see, I've done that. Now I haven't used Coke cans or Red Bull cans or any other bodge and codge in order to get that sit. All I've done is just shimmed the actual valve that was in there. So if you open this up, it will look like SIG actually put that in there. Same with all the other bits that go through here. It'll all look like SIGs actually put that in there themselves and actually done a good job of building it. So once that's all done, you then have in here another hop up, which I've done, which is a little plunger thing. So it's kind of like three cones all stacked on top of each other with a spring inside and they shove the valve back into position. Now I'll come into that later on about the pin inside it, which I think they've addressed and sorted out now. It looks like they've tapped it out rather than just kind of press fitted it, the firing pin in. But the actual return plunger thing, cone system, I don't know what you really call it, we just call it the return spring thing. And um, that was crawl cracked at the nose. So that's got a damping system on it now, just to take some of the shock out of that constant slapping back and forth. And then further on inside of here, you've got the trigger mechanism, which is a series of levers coming from the trigger all the way back around to here to cycle your magazine. There's a couple of things that have changed in there. One of the biggest things I did was massively upgrade the spring that sits about here on the guide. And that now just pushes and locks the whole system, keeps that lever back. Now the lever was also sticking forward for the mag cycle, so you couldn't physically fit the magazine in. And that was on its second trip to the, uh, the gun shop. Now, what I did there was I've fitted I haven't polished, I haven't done it, but I've fitted something in here that allows that whole thing to sit nice and square and move back and forth as it wants to on the return springs. It locks it back rather than sitting it forward because it's all sloppy and also gets it shimmed so that it sits and pushes in the direction it wants to without kind of like sitting forward, binding and all the other things that you get with this thing. Uh, this cocking lever here, and that's just um, for if the system's not set. So how it works is your hammer slides back and you have like a little L lock on a spring, which again has got shims in it to keep everything going in the right direction, keep it working nice and sharp. Locks the hammer in the back position. When you pull the trigger, that should wham, bang, off you go. You get the general gist off my fingers there. So... That's basically what I'm saying is it's a very complicated system in there. It's a very 
agricultural way of doing it. I think you could do something like an AK-47 style siphon system where you have like a, a little bit of CO2 just gets, you know, on a check valve gets filtered back and keeps everything in the lock position with a spring behind it that overcomes that. So it's just constantly pop, 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 almost blow back. Whatever you want to do, I mean, at the end of the day, but in terms of the point and shoot, snap and shoot, whatever you want to call it, Call of Duty stuff, this is kind of the first real attempt I've seen someone have a go at it. So, effectively, for me, it's Genesis. And in terms of air gun, yes, they do it with their BBs and they do it with this, that, and the other, but it's very easy to get something round to go where you want it to go, get something you know, Diablo pellet shaped to go where you want it to go efficiently is very difficult. And I don't envy the, the task that sig have had in that right so that's the internals done i think we'll get onto the magazine and the jams shortly i'm just going to quickly go into the um the anti-tampers so you inside of here you've got a little cap that comes out the bottom and you've got a phillips screw in there this then pulls away which reveals anti-tamper number one Moving up to anti-tampers two and three are behind here and here. And the anti-tamper is basically a tack screw with the head dr drilled out of it. All I'm gonna say is a hammer and a flat-headed screwdriver, sharp flat-headed screwdriver can get around that problem. And it, this has been opened and closed more than a horse legs. So that way of getting around the anti-tamper works. Just don't go daft putting them back in. They don't need to be. So to get to that, you'll need to remove this, which starts here with this thread adapter. Now this would be a good time to go into the, the barrel. So this spins off. If you're struggling to get this off, don't go daft, you know, just feel it as you go. Light pressure, just build up your pressure, bulk it up. Eventually it will spin away. It may drag the barrel out with it. You never know. And then once this is off, you can remove this, which is held in by one screw here and two underneath. This one's done up tight, these ones underneath are done up loosely. And this is because, like I said, this is not Magpul. This is cheap junk SIG. I am going to say junk and I'm going to slag you off for it because this line here splits all the way along that joining line there when you put in a countersunk screw that automatically tries to splay it out. So one of these is super glued in as a trial. This one, listen. Yep, that's loose, and that's loose because I haven't super glued it in because I want to make sure that I've got something else to practice on if I've got to come up with another system. That is a good place to keep this on its side at the minute. So be very, very, very careful when you put these in. Don't put them in too heavily, otherwise you will split this, and I guarantee you, you're going to struggle to get one of these, and if you do, it's going to probably cost you more than the rifle. So now you've got these screws out, the whole thing slides off, which then leaves you with, <laughs> flip it around this way, two tack screws on this barrel liner here on this side two on the other side you remove them you can then pull this forward section here out which will bring you to about there and then you can slide that whole thing it may all come off in one go and then you'll be left with a skinny barrel now this is where i've got a little bit of an issue with people shoving coke cans inside of here to try and shim all this trust me that little bit of movement there is nowhere near as big a problem as the movement you've got in harmonics inside that barrel. So this is a, a probably a, something like a 14, 13 and a half in a diameter. Your LOD of your barrel is about 11. The harmonics inside that barrel are what really lose the accuracy on this. Now what they've tried to do to get around it is you screw the barrel in to the sort of two half castings that have been tapped as one. Okay, that works into there once well, so all the chassis been closed up and then you fit everything and then this bit on the end goes on and kind of pulls the barrel and locks it out and that's how they're trying to deal with the harmonics personally i'll be putting dampers in at various points along this or trying to make that a sleeve so that actually that is your big problem and even then if you would just increase the thickness of where that is and put an o-ring in i.e where the coke can man sticks that in there, thicken that and put an o-ring in there. I reckon you'd probably get away with a bit more accuracy. Maybe. Uh, to keep this tight, you go finger tight as hard as you can again. I just get that. Don't go daft. Just, you know, get it up fit, like, hand tight and then just give it a little sort of sixteenth of a turn just to lock it in like that. I think best fittings do adapters for silencers, this, that and the other. <sighs> quiet enough in my opinion it's not particularly loud i don't think 
But yeah, don't be sticking tea and hemlocks and all the rest of it into here. It will just break it. It's not that strong. So that's that section dealt with, I think. I will say a lot in this. I'm just trying to quickly rattle through it. Let's go back into here and let's start discussing the jamming. So inside there is where you, you jam. So you've got this black section. Let me try and... So you've got this bit here, which is levered forward to create a seal, which then takes you into your sort of two halves, make a whole barrel assembly there. What I'm finding was happening was a pellet would get stuck somewhere between the two. So let me just, yeah, you go. There's your half barrel thing, and there's your little sort of valving system that gets pushed forward to create your seal for you, your blowback. Right then, let's spin that around and then let's move over to the magazine. So this is the magazine system here. As you can see, it's a belt system. Every now and again, I would just take this out and WD it and then wipe it down just to make sure that you've got some sort of lubrication in there. I tend to look at the things and move this camera around, don't I? But the way this works is effectively, it indexes, the lever comes down so you can't see because I'm pointing elsewhere. Let's try and get a view on that. The lever basically presses against these and then just moves it down. So that's how it works. And then it's on a track inside of here, which then comes up round little porky hole there, which is where your pellets fired from. Then your magazine cycles off them little blocks that stick outside, pushes down and cycles the whole thing. Right then, so that's in. So when you feed this belt into your magazine sun's really belting through the window sun in england what's going on eh? yeah once this goes through here what you'll tend to find is you'll end up with your white part join about there for most people they'll just shut it up stuff it inside fire it a few shots then it'll jam right which i did i did exactly the same thing right and then what i found out is because they're like that as you're cycling around you get to this joint they don't pull each other through so you're no longer kind of dragging this round you're creating a split so everything becomes out of sync if that makes sense i know a lot of people have said other things this that and the other and i will get ultimate amount of comments but when i do it i'll fit what so what i started doing was fitting it as you would and then cycling that white section up to the top here in the direction it's going to go so that the start of the chain is where you pull it so it'll drag it down push it pull it around and then that's it then you're onto your main chain and it'll cycle all the way around to this end one where it'll then jam but that's empty at that point so there's nothing now in the way of this it will just fire it and then it will go for its normal sort of jam and i don't know if you can if i can get a view in on this but if i can catch like you can see kind of the score marks where it's been and it's been jamming Padding up, you see that shiny bit just on the corner. So I started doing that, and then after I did that, I had no problems after that. It it ran for absolutely fine. Probably shot 160 rounds through it, and it just didn't jam at all. If it did jam, it was jamming because it had reached the end of its cycle. And like I said, at least you're not jamming a pellet half in the pipe, half in this belt. The magazine itself, again, it's not Magpul, it's not metal, it's just injection molded junk with the usual tack screws and they're holding everything together. And then you've got this little tab in there, as you can see, it's set up for 2.2. There is a 177 on the back, which then slides it over this side and makes it a 177. I don't know exactly know what that does, to be fair, I haven't really spent, but you have to take the magazine apart to be able to get to that, which is fairly easy to do. So, let's go back to the, the rifle. Everything now works on it. You can fit the magazine, fire a few shots, take it out, put it back in there. You couldn't do that before. You couldn't even fit the magazine in. It's all been reshimmed, all done. I will be doing a kit for this. It'll be available through the website, www.shootingoutdoors, all one word, .co.uk. Not the all one word, .co.uk, but you get what I mean. Shoot, yeah, shootingoutdoors.co.uk. And they will be fairly cheap. Now, my message to SIG is... You've got a fairly decent start point there. You can build on that quite easily and make this a very repeatable rifle. Like I said, there is a market for this. You understand that. You've just got to do a better job of executing it. For what I've actually cost me, should I say, to actually get this thing working has not been particularly costly in terms of manufacture. 
I would say what I've done has probably cost less than, oh, here we go. The, the, the kit won't be that expensive. Yeah, it'll just take the time to actually fit it. But if you're manufacturing these, it won't cost you that much at all. But it, it's not a very expensive set of fixes to do. And it's not bodge fixes either, where we're stuffing bits of, you know, packing in there just to wedge things out. All in all, it's not an accurate rifle. It is a point and shoot. It's something that's up and coming. It's great if you go into like a, a plinking pistol range and just kind of walk down it, you know, popping things off this, that and the other as you go double tapping, you know, your spec ops kind of thing, your call of duty sort of stuff. That's where it's, it's, it's quite fun. But in terms of accuracy, it's just buy an S410, <laughs> simple as that, or an S400 or even an S200 air arms. You won't, you won't be disappointed in terms of accuracy with either of them. The only downside is they're single shot, not semi-auto like what this is. Right, that's all I'm going to say on it. You can make your own mind up. And yeah, keep an eye on the website for the, uh, the hop-up kit. Thanks for watching. Bye.